spiders are found in quiet and secluded places, perhaps in the shadows of tree branches and shrubbery, around rocky places, or in the grassy meadows. Spiders feed mainly on insects. Some spiders spin webs which entangle insects. Others go stealthily about hunting their prey. This is a female nursery web spider. The male is somewhat smaller than the female. He is about one half inch in length. Here he is changing his skin or skeleton, which is an armor-like coat. By a series of jerks, he pulls out his legs. The eight legs finally come forth free, one at a time. At first, they are soft and rather shapeless, but soon joints will develop. First, they are soft and shapeless, but soon joints will develop in the proper places. He has caught a fly and is wrapping it up securely. Round and round he spins the silken threads until they completely cover every part of the unfortunate fly. This gift, wrapped in silk, he brings to a female nursery web spider. The male spider holds up the fly. He may stay in this position for several hours. Finally, the gift is accepted and they go away together, firmly grasping the fly. After mating, the female web spider weaves a silken and fills it with eggs. She grips the cocoon with her fangs and carries it about wherever she goes. If such an egg case is cut open, we find numerous eggs, each one much smaller than a pinhead. The female with silky threads binds together the heads of several leaves to form a platform on which she can expose her to the warm rays in a very short time. If a similar egg cocoon is cut open at the proper time, the eggs may be seen hatching into active young spiders. When the eggs are hatching, the mother spider spins a silken chamber around the cocoon to protect the spiderlings. She remains outside to the honeys. Even though they have hatched, the young spiders remain for some time within the cocoon where they change their first skin. These have been removed from the cocoon for photographing. After some time, they escape from the cocoon. They can be seen stirring about inside their airy silken castle. About five days later, the mother makes it possible for the spiderlings to reach the outside world. She bites a hole in the wall of the chamber. Through this opening, the youngsters may find their way outside. The mother now leaves the young spiders. A little later, the tiny creatures begin to crawl out of the chamber and they gather on the roof of their castle. For a while, the young spiders do not take advantage of their newly gained freedom. Then they begin spinning strands of silk. These shiny threads float through the air and become entangled in nearby weeds, forming a highway on which the young spiders travel. The first spiderling is about to journey away from home. All the other young nursery web weavers follow this example and continue to travel. The ways of the orb web spider are somewhat different. It depends on its neatly woven web to secure Fewer insects for food. The female orb web spider is much larger than the male, and she has a thinly marked white cross on her back. These orb weavers are always alert. If some unwelcome visitor tries to steal the food from the web, he is quickly chased away. Of the two, the female is the more utter, for she needs extra food to go into the making of her eggs. 
The male is timid even when courting. Therefore, he seems to be most unwelcome. After mating, he is seized by the fangs of the ever-hungry female. The silken strands are wrapped around him securely, and he is reserved for dinner. Often, the female spider will eat the male. The female spins a flat, circular web. First, she makes a framework which is fastened securely. Then, she spins strands from the outer edge to a point in the center. It is remarkable how evenly these threads are spaced. When these are completed, she begins to weave the spiral strands. She uses a rear leg to pull the thread tight and to fasten it to each strand. The silk comes from the spinnerets near the back end of the body. The web will act as a net to catch insects as they fly through the air. These spiral threads are covered with sticky beads, which you can see only when they are magnified. The entire web may contain a hundred thousand of these beads. To prevent her being captured in her own snare, the spider's legs are covered with an oily substance to which the glue-like beads will not cling. Having completed the web, the spider awaits a catch. A beetle falls from an overhanging branch. The beetle is paralyzed by a bite of the poison fangs. Round and round she turns the beetle, wrapping it in a jacket of silk. The web is in need of repairs, but there will be time enough for that later. The beetle has now been bound securely until dinner time. In the autumn, the female orb web spider lays a large number of round yellow eggs enclosed in a silken bag. To protect them from the weather, she spins a cocoon about the bag. The eggs will soon hatch, but the young spiders will remain within the cocoon until spring. Another spider found in nearly every part of the United States is the funnel web spider, whose webs may be seen forming glistening is on the grass during the morning hours. A narrow tube leads down from the funnel to serve as a retreat. A fly is caught in the web, and the spider rushes out to grasp it. The trapdoor spider, found in the southwestern part of the United States, builds a most unusual home. This spider digs a hole in the ground and closes it at the top with a trap door. It is easy to overlook this door because it matches the surrounding soil. When a section of the soil is removed, we can see the tunnel, which is about a foot long, and lined with silk. The door itself is also lined with silk, and the hinge is made of silk. The door is beveled and fits snugly with the top of the tunnel.